No, Pastor. No. Not today. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash overcome 2021 part three dot pdf. We're in uh, overcoming what's coming. Look at somebody and say, overcoming what's coming. Five things you need to know. The best way to prepare for the unknown is to trust the one that knows all. That makes sense, right? The best way to prepare for the unknown is to what? Trust the one that knows all. God is our only hope in a world that is on the brink of disaster. Do y'all think this world is on the brink of disaster? Yeah, yeah. Because our world is promoting sin, and sin is the end. The Bible said the wages of sin is what? Death. Sin will kill a culture. And listen, I said it earlier that we're not special. America's not special either. Don't you think America is the eagle that was in Revelation? America ain't nothing but another country that's going to fall. Quit basing how you read the Bible on America. I tweeted that this week. Quit basing your eschatology on America. Oh, the great tribulation and when the rapture going to happen and all this and that. People are going through great tribulation right now. People are being beheaded and burned right now. Hung right now for the cause of Christ. So don't you read it expecting us to get some kind of favor from God because we got an eagle on our money. We're not a special country. And if don't anybody believe that, China does. Talked about them last week. Amen. So you better understand. Quit thinking you all that. And America, oh, God's got his hand on this country because we are, uh, we, are, we are a Christian nation. We're not a Christian nation. Never have been. We're a Masonic nation. From the inception, we've been Masonic. Now, God slipped the gospel in here. Thank God for that. There was some great, amen, some great men of God that got the gospel in here. Some fathers. Some forefathers of the gospel during the uh, Protestant Reformation that made sure that we had truth over here just like they did in most places. But most places all over the world became dictatorships and they took it all out. They became communists and took it all out. And now America is fast becoming a communist nation. That's what happened when liberties are gone. When they take your liberties in exchange for equality. So you're going to exchange equality for liberty. So when they start, whenever they start preaching race and race becomes important and race becomes an issue and they're talking about race and everything needs to be equal, they're going to slip Marxism in where everybody's money needs to be equal. So everybody needs to match up financially so we can all do the same thing. And then those that are hurt and scarred and wounded, they're going to be, yeah, 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 I, yeah, let's all have the same thing. Once everybody had the same thing, that's totalitarianism. Now they can control everything because they gave you what you have. So they took away from the folks that earned it themselves and gave it to everybody just to level the playing field and make everybody have the same thing. That's Marxism. That's what BLM was. That's the spell they were casting last year in the streets. Antifa, that's, what they're, that's what's behind them. And that's what's behind Biden and Kamala. Marxism. Take your liberties. Oh, I'm glad we're recording this. Because somebody is going to revert back in a few months and they're going to remember what the freckle face preacher said. Because I know where this is going. It, it, it always happens this way. This is the beginning of communism. Take your freedoms. And you know the first freedoms to go Christian. Yeah, because see, your freedoms infringes upon the free. What you believe hurts the LGBT. So how are you going to speak up against the LGBT and your senator is a transgender? That's mutiny. That's dissension in a province. You can't do that. So you're going to go against who they've assigned as your governor, as your mayor? They're transgenders and your Bible tells you that that's sin? 
So we're going to do something with y'all. I'll put y'all in some camps. That's why Bill Gates, they say he's the world's richest, I mean, he largest landowner. He has more land than any other human being on earth. Bill Gates. And it's all farmland. Empty land, waiting for something to... Y'all better listen to me, man. And the, 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 the crazy thing is, I didn't just now start talking about this. I've been telling y'all. Amen. We must get, uh, where was I? God is our only hope in a world that is on the brink of disaster. Disaster. We must get closer to God in order to not be afraid of the things that are coming on the earth. If you're close to God, you ain't sitting here right now with your knees knocking. Somebody in here is scared to death. I tried to come just because it was Martin Luther the King's weekend. But I wish I hadn't because now he done said stuff that got me worried. If I don't say it, it's still going to happen. Ain't nothing I can do to stop Bill Gates. Bill Gates is on a mission to kill Negroes and reduce the population of the unwanted. Just like all of his predecessors did. Starting with Margaret Sanger. And what did she, always, what did she do? She went and got the church, the pastors, to do it. Let's get the pastors to endorse this. That's why the pastors now are promoting immorality. They're promoting immorality. Yeah, hip hop, they on TikTok. What you doing on TikTok? Your muscles sound like TikTok. You sound like a clock. You so old on there trying to pop lock, dancing and. Won't you go open your church? Amen. Yeah, I said it. All on TikTok. <laughs> Making the Bible appear and reappear, disappear. <laughs> Clowning. Church just closed. I be want to text so bad. Somebody take his phone. Take his phone. Old self. We must get closer to God in order to not be afraid. So the closer to God you are, the less afraid you'll be because you're close to the one that rules it all. There are some surefire tips to help us navigate through and overcome what's coming this year. We're going to deal with these tips. Amen? Amen. Amen. Number one, look at somebody and say, get stronger. get stronger. Look at somebody and say, get stronger. Get stronger. It ain't loud up here. I need to hear that because you need to get stronger. Look at somebody and say, get stronger. All right, there we go. Amen. Get stronger. This is not the year for weak Christians. Amen. You're not going to make it in 20 and 21 scared. You better be ready for anything. Amen. He's telling your job, oh, you got to take this vaccine or you can't keep your job. I said, well, then I guess I can't keep my job. I said, but matter of fact, let me go do some homework and find out if you can even say that. Because I got a feeling you made that up because you scared. Don't say that, though. Just go do your homework. Hey, man, don't be calling me, Pastor. I said what you said, and they let me go anyway. And they said it didn't have nothing to do with the vaccine. They said I was sad, sad. <laughs> don't get wrote up. Hey, Amen. You just go do your homework because they can't tell you that. That's, they, can't, they can't force that on you. Nobody. So, no, they can't do it. If you, need, if you needed to know that, the Lord just spoke it to you. That don't, that, no, they can't do that. Get stronger. And folks are dying of this vaccine. Like, I mean, people are really dying. And how many of them have been shown on the news? Why they don't show the deaths? They show, talk about the COVID deaths. But the vaccine deaths, they won't show it. It's a conspiracy. Amen. 
This is good right here, though. Second Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect where? In weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take what? Pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for who? Christ's sake. For when I am weak, what happens? Then I am strong. Amen. Boy, that's the greatest preacher ever, Paul. I'm telling you. Amen. Getting into the proper posture to surrender your thoughts and preconceived ideologies to God will help you remove anticipation and, uh, uh, and fear from you. Getting in a place where you trust what God has said and believing it fully will change how your mind processes current events. Amen. So you get in the right posture. The current events won't affect you like they're affecting the world. Amen. You walking, you know, the only time I see the news is if I'm somewhere in its own. Because I don't watch it. I ain't watching no robots trying to hype me up and get me amp. In other words, the closer you are to God who holds your future, the more you aren't concerned about the future. The closer you are to God who holds your future, the less concerned you are about the future. Because he holds it. Amen? Look at somebody and say, God, God's got it. God's got my future. Why would I worry and God has my future? We must draw closer to him as the world gets closer to its end. Fast from the things that occupy your time daily. So take a day and do, look at somebody and say, take a day and do something different. Do something different. Don't play Call of Duty that day. Be Call of Duty. Be called to your duty. <laughs> Old Baptist preacher, flip anything. Flip anything. <laughs> do your duty that you called to do. Amen. But that day, just turn stuff off that day. Go in a room where there's nothing on and read. Remember that? Remember reading? <laughs> Amen. Get a pad and pencil and write. It's different when you write it. It's hard to write when you haven't written in a long time, too. It look like I wrote with my feet when I try to write. I'm so used to typing stuff. Man. Yeah, it'll get worse. So, yeah, read. Listen to the Lord. Just spend a day doing something different, and you may hear something different. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So if you do the same thing every day, you're going to get the same result every day. Ooh, and don't be putting it off. The devil has a put off spirit. And you say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to start, you know, because it's got to be a Monday when I start. So you be in the, <laughs> and then if you miss that Monday and Tuesday come, it's got to be Monday. That means I got to wait till Monday. Why does it have to be Monday? You can't start midweek. With what, I, what me and the Lord are going to do, I can't start that midweek. I got to start that. You know how you just be trying to. <laughs> what is wrong with us? Oh, but let something happen Wednesday. On a Wednesday. On a Wednesday. I got rid of my heavy load. <laughs> yeah, let something happen. Boy, we, we crazy. Each day, seek to add some time for God to hear him and know him. Survey your week. Look at somebody and say, survey your week. Survey your week and see what things are in his way. You must know him in order to make it through this year. Amen. Y'all, I can't pull you through. I can preach to you. I can't pull you through. You must know the Lord. Amen. 
This is the year that your faith and confidence will be what? Tried. So this is testing year. Somebody's like, that wasn't last year? You sure, Pastor? I'm pretty sure last year. No, last year was toughing you year. God was just making you tougher last year. Anybody get tougher in 2020? You didn't know you were that tough, did you? Until they start calling you and messing with you. Telling you to leave your church where you said God told you to be. You had to get tough real quick, didn't you? To know what you know. Aren't you glad you Look at somebody and say, I'm glad I stayed. Amen. Well, praise God. Amen. So you got tougher last year. God allowed certain things to happen to strengthen you and make you tougher. Well, 2021 is where you're going to be tested and tried to see if you're going to even confess Christ under the rest. We can all call on his name when we want something from him in private. But are you going to be able to stand up to the devil when he confronts you about your beliefs? When it's going to cost you some money. We was going to promote you, but, you know, if we promote you, we need you to practice more diversity. Are you going to be able to say, well, you keep that promotion, brother. I don't, you know, I'm doing all right now. Are you going to say, well, the Lord does love everybody. You see how you can fix that and make that? You, can, you know, folks can make it whatever they want. Amen. Your foundation will be shaken and your doubt exploited by the enemies. They want you to believe a lie, so you must know. Look at somebody and say, you must know the truth. You won't know it's a lie if you don't know the truth. They want you to believe a lie. Amen. Amen. We know gorillas can't get COVID. Look at somebody and say, that's a lie. Two gorillas tested positive. First of all, why are you testing gorillas? Second of all, what kind of gorilla will let you go up his nose? That ain't no gorilla. It's an animatronic. You was at Showbiz Pizza when you gave that test. That ain't no real gorilla. You ain't sticking nothing up no real gorilla's nose. And what was the gorilla doing to make you think he had COVID? <laughs> okay, let me go back. So I'll have Elder here to stop me. Deshaun, you're going to have to take his place. I mean, why? You just sitting around <laughs> checking the gorilla out. I mean, he's moving a little different today. He's moving kind of slow. He's a silverback. They all move. Have you ever seen one moving fast? They move slow because they ain't scared of nothing. <laughs> he got to speed up a silver for nothing. They want you to believe a lie. So commit verses to memory and speak these verses to God. Commit it to memory. Commit verses to memory. That means you need to start memorizing verses. There ought to be verses you know by heart that when you're praying, you can quote them to God. But you're not just learning them for God. You learn them when they take these Bibles. Amen. Because when a nation becomes, look, few hand claps. You don't have to clap. When a nation becomes communist, a totalitarian government, the first book off all the shelves is the Bible. But get a physical Bible and download your things from the cloud. Prepare for censorship and find ways to get fellowship and sharpened by the saints in spite of government regulations. Amen. Well, I mean, the Bible said we're supposed to uh, obey the law of the land. What if the law of the land tells you it's a sin to be a Christian? It's against the law to be a Christian. What if the law of the land tells you that you can't practice Christianity no more? You going to do what they say? No. No. It's called spiritual disobedience. I'm going with God, bro. Amen. I'm going to do it God's way. I don't care what you say. So the time is coming when the government's going to try to regulate stuff that they shouldn't be regulating. And I'm going to have to step up and say, no, y'all can't tell me that. And if it means you're going to put me in some shackles and chains. I went through 400 years of... No, I'm just playing. 
Somebody want that testimony. It's so bad. You ain't seen 400 days. 400 hours of oppression. Shut up. <laughs> That's them cages they talking about. No. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so if they, if they, if once they start censoring, which they've already done, the dude from Twitter said, he said, the Trump account isn't the only account we're going we gonna to take down. They're planning to take down all conservative accounts, which to them, conservatism equals morality. Right, right. So they're taking down anything that is going against immorality. Can I keep going? We must prepare for what lies ahead by becoming stronger in the what? In the faith. Luke 21 and 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of what? Heaven shall be what? In this day, the powers are Shaken. They just did a report. That, you know, they just released all of the UFO files. The alien files, they've just released them all. So now it is not even a secret. Why is the news talking about it? I would think alien is a little more important than COVID. <laughs> Bro, you worried about a vaccine and something with seven arms is reaching out at you. Bro, we be talking about that creature. Number two, sound voices. Ooh. Oh, this is important right here. See those sheep? They just scattered, scattered sheep. Thank God for people. I thank God for the people that have trusted the ministry, like uh, uh, Pastor Price back there, but others all over the world really have just completely dependent and trusted the ministry. They believe in what is being taught because it hasn't changed since day one. Amen. 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 Everything has been the same. It's just consistent. Just like God wants it, I've only taught what God told me to teach. I haven't backed off of it. It's just been the same. And it is, it is serving as a ministry for a lot, a lot of people that are without. Amen? Amen? But a lot of people are scattered sheep. And scattered because they are scattered sheep, they don't have the protection of a shepherd. Amen. And so they're influenced by too many different voices. And that's a dangerous place to be in when you don't hone in on a voice or submit yourself under some headship or leadership, someone or ministry that you trust. Amen? Amen? And some of them don't, you know, they don't live here, but they still hold this ministry as that protection or that guide. And that's fine if you can't find nobody where you are. Amen? But you can't just have a buffet of preachers speaking into your life. Amen. Oh, look at the hand claps. Oh, man. And why do you need that? When you're not hearing from the voice God gave you, then you need to go hear from God. You don't even have God in your lineup, in your playlist. Romans 6, 17 through 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid. Avoid folks that are causing division and offenses contrary. Amen? Amen. They cause divisions, dividing the body or scattering the sheep. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. They do it for their own benefit so they can have a following, so they can have likes, so they can have a comment. They do it so that they can have something. It's for their own benefit or their own belly. And by good works and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the who? Simple. The simple. So usually the scattered sheep are the simple. Those are the ones that believe stuff that's dumb. Amen. Amen. The Bible uses a very kind word, simple. <laughs> we have other words. But the Bible uses simple. <laughs> A simpleton. And that's somebody that has really no depth and they just believe stuff. The problem with the internet and home confinement, which happened in 2020, is the buffet of messengers that people listen to daily. I mean, folks wake up with tongues in their hand. I'm going to pick this sermon, this one, this person, this person, and have all these voices speaking into them. 
and then try to come to the voice that they originally had called pastor for advice, but then you give them advice, it don't line up with preacher number five. Now there's confusion. What should I do? Now you got to call your mama or your auntie. You're confused because you took, you took, um, uh, you took something away from your pastor's authority when you added other authorities. Now his voice isn't as important as it used to be. You've diluted it with many voices. Can I preach in here? Oh, pastor, see that now it sounded like a cult. Bruh, bye. It is what it is. There's no multiple shepherds, shepherding sheep in the Bible. That's not God's design. I, I'm a, I should have brought the video. I should have put the video in this message of the shepherds. Y'all seen that video of those shepherds, all those scattered sheep? And there were shepherds standing up there, and each one of them did their call, and only their sheep came to them. <laughs> well, look at them. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? They are coming. Oh my God. Oh my God. They won't follow another voice. And there's a reason God used that analogy in the word. You can listen to me now, or you can remember what I said when you have a melting pot of confusion in your head. That's your choice. It don't bother me. <laughs> Amen. It don't bother me. I don't get advice from a whole bunch of preachers, and they try to tell me everything. Oh, I, there's emails waiting on me right now. Uh, brother, see, I woke up this morning, and oh, oh, you was on my heart, brother. Oh, and God says that the, the, the lesser is going to be greater. And brother, you know, and God said, you know, and, and I had this one brother tell me, that, oh, and you know, this pastoring that you're doing, you know, brother, God spoke it. Oh, he told me that you're not really a pastor. You should be back on the road, on the road doing the truth behind hip hop. And see, then I would come with you, and then we would be going from city to city. And as we go from city to city, see, See, we would, we and we, see, see, but we can't pastor together. So you're just going to throw the church away because you can't do that with me. But if I get back on the road, you're going to be there with me. I said, boy, if you don't shut up. I get emails like that all the time. I'm not listening to everybody. I know the folks that I need to listen to. They've been in my life. They've been in my life for years. And when they say something, I'm going to listen. I ain't listening to just any email that's coming to me. But they serve their own bellies. The problem with the internet is, oh, I already read that. Did I read that? People are listening to, yeah, to many voices that are contrary to one another. So when the voices don't agree, which one you going to pick? Well, I'm going to use the Holy Ghost to tell me which one is telling me the truth. Did the Holy Ghost tell you to listen to all them voices? need to ask that question first. Their religious experience is schizophrenic. That's schizophrenia. And they can never pinpoint the problem. They don't ever know why they are like they are. But they're schizophrenic, spiritually. Listening to voices that do not agree and trying to decipher which is the voice of God will surely lead you into confusion and give the devil room to bring fear, doubt, and deception in your life. Can I keep preaching in here? Y'all not scared of this, are you? Okay. The Bible uses shepherds and sheep to describe the relationship between God's pastors and what? Congregations. Congregations. Whether it's in a building or at home, the voice you follow should be aligned with your heart and mind. 
If you do not trust that voice to properly lead you, you cannot supplement that voice with other voices that disagree. Amen. So don't be coming to, to me, EX Ministries, oh yeah, he teach the truth or whatever, whatever, and then going, for some, going to somebody else for the Negro land message. Because you know I ain't teaching that foolishness. That's heresy. Damnable heresy. We don't teach skin and racism. Let me trying to supplement that with somebody else. Yes, Can I preach in half? Yes, but the Bible uses shepherds for this reason. If you do not trust that voice to properly lead you, you cannot supplement that voice with other voices that disagree. Any voice and instruction you are receiving must be from a trusted source. Look at somebody say trusted source. That you have placed over you in God. So all you got to do is ask God, is this a trusted source? God will show you, I don't want you to believe me. Yeah. Ask, look at somebody say, ask the Lord. Yeah. I'm not afraid of you asking the Lord. Please ask the Lord. Yeah. Let him show you whether you should be here. Yeah. Let him show you, where you sh whether you should be listening to this. Yeah. Any voice and instruction you are receiving must be from a trusted source that you have placed over you in God. The devil seeks to destroy godly authority because so many do not want to follow a man. That's why he took the man out of the home. You take the man out of the home, folk don't trust the man, nobody wants to follow the man. But God is going to keep working through what? Amen. The man. God is not giving up on the man. The man is still the head of the home. Amen. The man is still the head of his church if he's a pastor. Amen. Amen. The man is still the apostle, the bishop. That's not female. That's not feminine, according to the word. Now, you can do whatever you want to do, mademoiselle. But that's, that is not consistent with what the Bible says. I, I'm getting old as I preach. I feel it. I feel my daddy coming on. But that's, <laughs> that's, that's not what the Bible says. So you can go and preach and minister and lay hands and all that and spread witchcraft everywhere. But God is not using you against what he said in his word. He's not. Amen. And while the women somewhere laying hands on somebody and knocking them out, the young girls in the church dress like floozies. Because the Bible told the older women to teach the younger women, not the men in the church. Won't you, won't you start an Instagram ministry? Check out the teenage girls' Instagram pages. Your own daughter's pages first. Start with those. For you putting hands on men. That's not your job. That's not your call. That's not in the word. Yeah, either we're going to believe the truth or we're not. We're adding to it because you want to do something. Amen. There are some that just preach and teach against others in an effort to stop the gathering of believers under authority. So they're just trying to stop believers under authority. They try to say that the church age has ended. Not just because the government shut shut some down, the church age didn't end. Right. Amen? Amen? Because the ones that the government can't shut down are having church. Right. Amen. Amen! Look at somebody and say, I'm in here. Amen. So the church age hasn't ended because we in here. Amen. It couldn't have ended because we're in here. Amen. Just because you don't like church, don't be trying to make that biblical. If you check the history of the folks that believe the church, see, that's what you need to do. Check the history of the folks preaching that the church age has ended, and you'll, you, you'll find some stuff. You'll find out that they're a scattered sheep that got upset with someone that hurt them. So they do not want you to follow anyone. They got church hurt. So now something wrong with the church because you got hurt by one. Are you not going to allow teachers to teach you because there are some bad teachers? Are you not going to work anymore because you had a bad boss? Are you going to divorce because you had a fight? Did somebody say yes? Oh, yeah. say yes. We talked about that this morning. See, that's confirmation. God spoke through the pastor. That's yeah, so they're scattered sheep. They're hurt. 
So they, they don't want nobody to go to church because they don't want to go to church. These people are wolves, and their job is to scatter sheep so that many will be lost. They sit on the Internet and fault, find, argue, and attempt to take down leaders because they themselves have failed at leading. If I can't do it, can't nobody do it. Following a sound voice can yield blessings in your life and keep you on the right track that God has for you. Amen? Has anybody a witness of that? Following a sound voice? Did it make a difference in your life? God is not going to change this structure because a few men disagree with it. Y'all know God ain't thinking about these folk. He never ended it, and it will not end until he returns for it. So God never ended the church. He's going to end it by showing up. Amen. Amen. He told the seven churches of Asia, y'all just keep going. Repent, but keep going. So get the right voice in your life and keep it no matter how the word challenges you. Oh, that's the thing. Can you hang in there while the word is boxing you? Can you make it through some uppercuts? Stuff that don't feel good? Ooh, pastor, you stung me today when you said I can't start my church. I know I'm a woman, but I just felt like God told me that I wear bow. Take that uppercut. That's some foolishness. Get somewhere and sit down. Amen. You needed that punch. Oh, Pastor, when you talk about the black and miles, oh, that just hit me. <laughs> it needed, it needed to hit you. Hope it stabbed you. Let the word just <laughs> pierce. What you smoking for? Do not allow your itching ears to cause you to abandon the truth for the lie and end up without a good voice and leader. So don't bounce because it's challenging you and it's hurting your feelings. The word is going to do that whether it's coming out of a man or you reading it. Amen. Uppercut, uppercut. Body blow, body blow. Y'all remember that game? <laughs> I took you back, didn't I? God will grant you leadership if you trust him and are, and are obedient. People tell me all the time, Pastor, I've been praying for a church, I can't find nothing. Well, maybe God don't want you to find nothing. Maybe if you get there, you're going to tear it up. Why don't you make sure you're okay? So pray about what's in you. Make sure all your church hurt is gone. Matter of fact, just make your family your church right now. Go around your family and love them and fellowship with them. Get along with them first. Because a bad family member is going to be a bad what? Church member. God is hiding churches. I knew there was a building right there. I'm right here, Pastor, at the address. 4747, I'm right here. There's nothing here. God just hiding it. It's there. People in there, they have a church. You can't even see. God don't want you in there tearing a church up. <laughs> Get yourself together first. Amen. Go make up with your family. Number three, don't believe. Look at somebody say, don't believe the hype. First John 4 and 1, beloved, believe not every spirit, but do what? Try the spirits, whether they are of God. And don't try the spirit by the spirit. Don't do that. Because that's not written there. You try the spirit by the word. We don't know what the spirit. You, what? Amen. The spirit might tell you anything. Especially when you want something. The spirit going to always be on your side. Your spirit. He said, I'm in agreement. Oh, my spirit. Is, <laughs> your spirit's always in agreement with what you want to do. So you try the spirit by the what? the word of God. So believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many, how many? Many, many false prophets are gone out into. There are so many internet prophets making profits these days. They say things for clickbait 
to get you to listen so they can get paid. There are so many failed prophecies in 2020. There's always a plethora of them during election year and Super Bowl time. <laughs> there are people that break down COVID conspiracies, the vaccine ingredients, and the New World Order. Now, I am one of them, so I do believe some of these sources are credible. Okay, so I'm not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Some of these sources are credible. However, you knew that was coming. Without this Holy Spirit and a good leader, you will find yourself getting into things that are what? Harmful for your spiritual walk. Witchcraft. Digital witchcraft. You will even find yourself taking in more theory than theology. You will begin to look for answers without God's leading and even forward more conspiracy than true biblical doctrine to others. Instead of a witness for Jesus, you become a catalyst for confusion. People, you must not believe everything you read and see. Where? On the internet. You must have a trusted source that guides you through this time. It can't be anyone that is doing it for views, likes, and comments. And you know when they're doing that because if they're not talking about conspiracy, don't nobody want to hear them. It can't be, oh, yeah, it can't be anyone that flip-flops on their prophecies, predictions, and Bible stance. God has many that are solid in the faith and have a proven track record of consistently doing what is best for God's people. Pray for this guidance and get under a good shepherd because being a scattered sheep during this time is dangerous and deadly. Y'all better hear me preaching. Number four, just say no. Just say no. When the sin come, say no. This is not the time. To sin. It's not time to be in sin. It's not time to have a secret lifestyle. Have a girlfriend aside of your wife. Have a boyfriend aside of your husband. Have a girlfriend you're sleeping with and you ain't married. Have a boyfriend you're sleeping with and you ain't married. Doing stuff on the internet with your eyes, with your body, with your thoughts. It's not the time to sin. Getting drunk, stumbling out the restaurant. This is not the time. Smoking the Buddha. It's not the time. Well, you can't weed smoke. It's not the time. Cussing your wife out and hitting her and swinging out. Beating your husband up and pal driving him into the ground. Kicking his chest in. This is not the time. It's a sin both ways. I don't care if you can whoop him. It's a sin both ways. Look at somebody say, just say no. Let me finish this message. It's 12, 19. James 4 and 8. <laughs> Draw nigh to God and he will what? Draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. You what? Double, what's double-minded? Don't come in church trying to play church and then go try to play the world. That's double-minded. Don't come in and act like you saved. And then when you leave here, everybody you hang out with is in sin. That's why God gave you a fellowship. He gave you a fellowship so you could be around like-minded believers. You're not taking advantage of that? And you come to church and all your friends somewhere else. Well, I come here, see, so that I can get the word, but then I go here. You better, you better quit having unsaved friends. That's all I got to say. Birds of a feather going to flock together. That ain't in the Bible. Don't be <laughs> quoting that. It's not in the Bible. But the Bible does say bad morals does what? Corrupt good manners. So you're around somebody with no morality, your manners are going to be corrupted. Ain't nobody reminding me of how I used to sin. Why would I hang around somebody talking about the stuff I got delivered from? You crazy. That's schizophrenia. During the 
this time, there is a lot of darkness around. Y'all believe that? This darkness was allowed into our atmosphere by scientists and the elite to plague people that are genetically wired by God to resist the coming new world order. So the darkness came because when you were saved, I talked about this in Era of Man 1. When you were saved, uh, those epigenetic uh, scientists did an experiment and found out that you were genetically modified by God. So salvation changed your DNA. Genetically, you were modified, and they can find that information under a microscope. They can test you and see that you are Christian by your DNA makeup. Wow. Y'all don't remember me talking about that? Yeah. That's in era, man. We got the videos right over there. In, yeah. yeah. So those scientists found that out. Well, if those scientists found that out, then Bill Gates and that scientists don't like it. So we need to remodify that DNA and turn it away from God with RNA that they could just load in a vaccine. Yes, I talked about this before because this ministry is 100% prophetic. If you didn't know, now you know. Go get the video. It's on that. Amen. I'm not saying that arrogantly. I did tell you though. Did I tell you? So, the people that are going to resist the new world order, they want to change these people. And it looked like it's working. Some of them didn't need the shot. All they need to see was Trump. And the all-forgiving God that they used to believe in ain't so forgiving anymore. The all-encompassing death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus isn't for everyone anymore. Man, I'm preaching in here. I feel the anointing of God in here. The devil wants the world to himself, and he wants people blind to the truth. But as long as we are here, we are reminders of the, world, of the word and renegade truth warriors ready to fight off the darkness. So the devil, look, somebody said the devil has a problem with you. He has a problem with you because of what you know, where you go to church, what you're learning, how you're positioned. He know he going to have some problems trying to convince you of some foolishness. So I got to try to modify those folks with this vaccine or whatever I got to do. We got to try to change these people because we're going to have some problems getting this new world order instated as long as some adamant believers are on earth. Amen. Adamant believer means I'm unmovable, unshakable, and unbreakable. We are. Yeah, bro, you're going to have a problem. Especially if you bring that needle around me. I'm going to take it and give you the shot. So this is why the enemy unleashed hell on earth last year. It wasn't just the pandemic, but it was CERN and witchcraft that made way for it all. Antifa did satanic ceremonies in the streets to usher in anarchy. The BLM, Black Lives Matter, did Yoruba and Santeria rituals to bring forth feminism and the emasculation of men, especially black men. Amen. The devil raised up a nation of men that are women-led in their home to surrender male energy to witches and feminists. In this state, our nation is uncovered and vulnerable to the power of the devil. The Bible tells us how else can you spoil how else can you enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods unless you do what? First bind the strong man. So that's what they did with the rituals, with all of the, the, the anarchy, everything. Bind the strong man. Put the woman in the front. Then the world is vulnerable. Amen. Yeah, that's how all this started with Eve. Our world is hemorrhaging because of all that occurred that last year. We as believers must stay clean. Look at somebody and say, stay clean. We cannot open up our lives to sin practices. We must live right and good. It's not easy because we are flesh, so we will fall every now and then. But we cannot, look at somebody and say, you can't stay there. Man, you better get forgiveness and get up. We cannot practice sin. 
and be a true believer in God. If we stumble, we must repent and turn from all sin. Jesus is still our rock and will forgive us, but the consequences of certain sins can have lasting effects in 2021. This is the year where you're just not going to get away with it. The devil is seeking for an opening or doorway to get in so he can align us with the wrong agenda this year. Living right is always the goal. Look at somebody and say, that's my goal. That's my goal. Living right is always the goal, but in 2021, it is a must. Stay, look at somebody and say, stay clean, saints. Stay clean, saints. Y'all better listen to me. Number five, healthy and wise. How many of you want to be healthy and wise? Amen. Third John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as what? Thy soul prosper. Because of electromagnetic frequencies, or EMF, and new technologies, 5G and all of that, that our world is advancing this year, our bodies are acting very strange. It's no coincidence. Every time they activate this stuff in an area, everybody in that area gets sick. We are having pains and feeling things in places that we never have. Anybody can testify to that? Amen. I mean, stuff hurting that ain't ever hurt before. Shooting pains in your head. I've never had that before. I, I, I've never had that before. A regular cold or flu that we normally get over in a day or two can last for weeks. We can have lingering coughs and lose taste and smell for days. Our appetites can leave and our bodies can just be in shock from what is happening around us that we cannot see. You must understand that because of the metals and chemicals in our bodies, we are reactors to electromagnetic waves. Talked about this in the Truth Behind Hip Hop 13, day two. So make sure you get that because, I mean, that's just no way I can cover all of that. But that's what the chemtrails, I believe, one of the uses of the chemtrails was to get metals in the atmosphere because that's what they're spraying, aluminum. They're spraying an aluminum compound, put it all in the air, gets in the water supply, gets in our bodies, so now we are antennas. All of these towers around us are emitting radiation at a higher rate than usual. Y'all think they, uh, yeah, you really think those towers aren't going to affect your health? Electromagnetic waves aren't going to affect you. That's why the microwave have a door. <laughs> Take the door off of it and just warm your fish up. <laughs> your head will be bubbling. <laughs> yeah, it has a door on it to protect you from the electromagnetic waves that's cooking the water or the moisture in the food. It's just heating up the moisture in the food. I don't use those. I stopped using them because they put carcinogens in your food, cancer-causing carcinogens. I told y'all that in Pharmacos. You must understand that because of the metals, the chemicals in our bodies, we are reactors to electromagnetic waves. All of these towers around us are emitting radiation at a higher rate than usual. There's no way 5G can be faster than 4G if it has, doesn't have more radiation. It takes more radiation for it to go faster. Yeah. Don't it take more power in a car to go faster? Yeah. A four-cylinder is not outrunning an eight-cylinder. No, Nothing. It's not the same amount of power. So if you want to go faster, you need more what? Power. power. Our immune systems are fighting constantly. Sleeping with your phone or Wi-Fi router close to you at night can cause even more problems for you physically. We must eat good and clean in 2021. I wasn't expecting amens. I wasn't even expecting amens. I know you hit at the Golden Corral. How do you even do Golden Corral during the pandemic? What do they do? I mean, because I didn't, it was always a pandemic in Golden Corral. Because them little kids be picking food up with their hands. That's a pandemic. There's always been COVID there. That's always been a pandemic. Uh, you need a vaccination before you get in line. I mean, they scooping with their hands and everything. Touching utensils, digging in their nose, picking up stuff. 
Oh, yeah, this is a pandemic right here. I don't like open buffets ever. Somebody is looking forward to that today. Pastor, it don't matter what you say. Like, <laughs> that's what we have. We must eat good and clean in 2021. We, we must uh, lose excess weight and keep our hearts healthy to handle the radioactive devices and towers that surround us. We can't wait until we have flu-like symptoms to start praying. Don't you wait. You need to, amen. amen. We must hear the man of God now warning us to eat right, rest good, and exercise in order to survive this onslaught of technological advancements. Amen. Pray for God to show you the truth about all of this. He will reveal what you need for your body and how to fight against it all. Amen. Summary. Hey. We know aliens are coming. <laughs> Who don't know that? This is your first time. What? Yes. Aliens are here now and more are coming. I don't know what they look like. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if they're reptilian, pleiadian, or grades. I don't know what they are. All of them ugly. <laughs> Anything that ain't human looks weird to me. Amen. And I'm going to rebuke it with the power of God. I don't care what it looks like. So we know they're coming. We know war is in imminent. China is not happy with us right now. We know unrest and civil war is already brewing in our country. The civil war is scheduled to go down on the 20th. We know Im immorality is fighting against morality in our government. You don't know that? That's the fight. Immorality versus morality. We know a lot of black, you don't have to amen. That's what's happening. Yeah. We know a lot of black folks are skin worshipers and many white folks are mixing the leaven of Herod with their gospel. Right? We all guilty. We know that our world is on the brink of disaster and our land needs Jesus. So we as believers must do what we need to do to survive it all until Jesus returns. He is coming back soon. Y'all believe that? Amen. And we must keep ourselves ready. He is our only hope. But until he returns, we must do what the Holy Ghost has told us to do in Jesus. Amen. 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 Matthew 24 and 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is what? Close. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour, no man knoweth, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So we don't know when he's coming back, but we do know that there are things we need to do until he returns. Amen? Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. Well, we just, I'm just trying to get you ready. And if you'll let me, I told y'all, oh man, last year, no, 2018, I told y'all, that I used to always dream about the end times. Y'all remember me telling you that? Yeah. And that I was leading people to safety and different things during the end times, and I still believe that's my job. I believe God called me to do that, and all the truth behind hip hop, just all the time that was put in down through the years, all of the prophecies and things that God spoke through the ministry that we recorded and have record of and all those things was for a reason. It was to get us to where we are right now. There are a lot of people just all over the world that are trusting what is being told or what was said through those videos and through EX Ministries for this time. And, you know, I, I don't feel responsible. I, I'm responsible for, you know, speaking truth, but I'm not responsible for people. Amen. 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 I can't carry everybody. I'm responsible for getting you the truth. And I believe that. That's what I'm doing, and I'm going to continue to do it. I'll do it until they stop me, and even when they stop me, I'm going to fight to keep going. 
because I believe it's important for you to have a shepherd leading you through this time, keeping you focused on what is important, keeping you remembering what's important. Amen? And we all come from all kinds of places, and y'all know I don't show favoritism to nobody. I mean, this isn't a church just made up of husband and wives and four children. There are, there, amen. And we've got single mothers in here just trying to make it to the end. We got single fathers in here trying to make it to the end. We got folks uh, widowed in here trying to make it to the end. Widow words, trying to make just folks, you know, we, we just come from everything in here. Amen. Divorcees and folks been remarried. Whatever the case, we're just trying to make it to the end together. Amen. 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 Look at somebody and say, I want to make it with you. Yeah, so we don't, you know, ain't no discrimination in here. Ain't nobody thinking that we better than this person and that person. Y'all, we just, I'm just trying to make, I didn't think I would come this far. And if it wasn't for the power of God, I wouldn't have. Amen. If it wasn't for God, none of us would be here. Amen. Some of us deserve the death penalty. But God said, no. I'm going to take you through the end times. And I'm going to give you a sound word and sound doctrine to stand with you. And, and sound believers to fellowship with. Give you a place where you can be strengthened. Where iron can sharpen iron. You can be inspired. You can be admonished. When you need to be, you can be rebuked. But you can be forgiven. You can be brought back. We can all make it together. God has designed this place. Don't Y'all listen. Do not... Do not take it for granted what God has given you here. Amen. Amen. In the end times, he prepared a place. God spoke to your heart and told you to get here no matter what. Over 85% of you came from out of state. Relocate, loaded up something and moved here. Because God told you to be here. And now it's becoming very evident why he told you to do I mean look at look look around look no no really look look around we're in here 2021 the majority of churches are not gathering and we are in here So God spoke to you. You heard it. You knew this was the place. And you're here. Don't take it for granted. But understand, there are some that aren't here. There are some that can't get here. There are some that were plucked out of here. And we need to pray for them. We need to pray for other believers for, to, to be strong in this hour. We don't want to stand by ourselves. We're not trying to, I'm not trying to pass them no more than this, trust me. And that, that overflow that's full right now makes me nervous. We, but we, you know, we, we, I can't pass to everybody. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to grow the church. I don't want the church no bigger, nothing like that. I don't, we're not looking for any of that. So we need to pray people where they are, that they, that they can find the word, that they can find the fellowship and not hear crazy voices and be worried and their hearts beating fast and anxiety and all of those things coming upon we're going to take that time right now and we're going to trust God for them. We're going to believe that God will begin to unify his body in this time. So as the devil is planning his, you know, whatever they're going to do and their assemblies and all of that stuff, we're going to pray for the assembly of God's people that it be strengthened in this hour. Amen. So, amen. Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. First, we thank you for giving us a place to fellowship, to come together, to worship you, Father God. A place where there is no fear. We don't, fear doesn't dwell here. Just power, love, and a sound mind, Father God. We thank you for a place where we can come together and fellowship and be, like, be with like-minded believers and have all things in common, Father God. Looking forward to being together. Just, God, on during the week, just can't wait for Sunday to come so we can come together and sing songs of worship and hear a word and see our brothers and sisters and be encouraged and encourage others, admonish and just all of those things. We thank you, Lord, because you designed from the ground up, you designed this fellowship for this time. 
God, you built it for this time. You fortified it for this time. And you have seen it all the way through to this time. Father God, you've given us this. And we thank you for it. We don't take it for granted. We thank you, God. We thank you for the music, for the singers. Thank you for the albums that we've recorded, just music that we can share. Father God, ride around listening to the recording studio that you blessed us with, all this equipment and just everything. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. This is special in this time. But God, we don't want to take it for granted, and we definitely don't want to take for granted the fact that many are without fellowship and many are without uh, uh, a place to connect with and to be with father god and many are without a shepherd in their in, in the places where they live so god we stand right now and pray for them we pray for believers everywhere we pray for those that long for fellowship that they will get to fellowship god we pray for those that long for their churches to be reopened that you will open the church with power and no fear father god we pray for them in the state they're in. Father God, so they won't be scattered sheep, listening to every voice, believing any wind of doctrine. But Father God, you will keep them through this time. So strengthen us as a body, Lord God. Strengthen those that are lacking in faith. Strengthen those that have fear. Strengthen those whose health is not where it should be. Father God, strengthen them right now. And help us to stay focused on what is important. Help us to pray and fast. Seek your face and be stronger in this hour. God, we pray for believers everywhere. Now just lift your hand. And Father, I pray for those that are here. I pray for their faith. How bold they are to come out during a pandemic when they've been threatened with everything and told that everything is in the air. And if they come around, folks, they're going to get... God, these people have braved it and have come out for the fellowship, forsaken what has been told to them for the sake of fellowship, loving one another, seeing one another, being encouraged by one another, singing songs of worship, and hearing a word live and in person. God, they braved it, so I thank you for them, and I pray right now as their hands are lifted up that no sickness, no disease, no virus, nothing will come upon them to overtake them, Father God, that you will keep them healthy, Father God, and wise in this hour, that you will give them instruction on what to eat, when to eat, how to sleep, when to exercise, when to move, what this pain is about, what this is about, what's going on in their own bodies. Father God, you will give them the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. Father God, so that they can discern what they need to do in this hour to combat all of this junk that's going on. And Father, as their hands are lifted up, I pray for their families. I pray for their families that aren't even here, God, their relatives. That Father God, that they won't con their relatives will not con uh, 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 continue to point the finger at them and really ridicule them because of their measure of faith. I pray right now that they won't be ridiculed because they choose to stand in this hour. And I pray for those that do the ridiculing, Lord, those that speak in that, that you would increase their faith and their understanding of these end times, that this is the end. How dare the devil shut down the church? Close your doors, God. The church doesn't belong to him. It doesn't belong to the government. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to you. So we pray, Father God, that you ignite the faith in your people everywhere. Let them know that there's nothing behind this. There's no normal behind this. There's no going back. This is it. So they either choose to stand now or lay down. But God, we're going to stand. And having done all to stand, we're going to stand therefore, like your word says, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, come on and give God some praise. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to stand no matter what. Turn the lights on. I'm going to stand. Come on. I'm going to stand. Man, God has given you a fellowship. He's given you somewhere to be. You are having church right now on a Sunday and you will not die. Hallelujah.
Look at somebody say, I'm having church. Look at somebody say, matter of fact, I'm about to have some church right now. Right now. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, PJ. That's the key. Look at somebody and say, right now. Right now. Man, I'm having church right now. I'm not afraid of no diseases, no viruses. I came to have church right now. Look at somebody and say, he's done too much. He's done too much. I've seen him do too much. So I'm having church. I'm having church right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. But even while you're sitting, you can have church. I'm having church. And I'm going to keep having church. And I'm not going to stop because they tell me to stop. Until the Lord says stop, I'm going to have church. Because this is the Lord's church. Look at somebody say, this is God's church. How you going to preach for 20 years and then lay down at the end times? Call yourself a believer for 30 years and lay down during situation critical. This is the, look at somebody say, this is the time. All right, all right, y'all sit down. Amen.